Um, so I'm doing uh, a series of short clips that we're going to be incorporating into the talk that Jason and Leo and I are doing about um, Web3 and um, electrical templating and uh, other other stuff uh, today. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get started. These are a couple maps because I won't have screen share in Jason's uh, vMix setup. And I did have a couple of topics that I wanted to talk about where I would like to manipulate my own map. Uh, so we're going to talk about an image that uh, is was taken at Los Alamos. It was a group of three men. It was John von Neumann, uh, sort of father of computing and cellular automata, and um, and then it was uh, Stanislaw Ulam, who was in applied mathematics and statistics, including the Monte Carlo method and sort of risk and game link gaming, and uh, then. Uh, is it Richard Feynman, uh, the guy who founded nanotechnology? And so it was in the context of Los Alamos. And what I wanted to try to sort of emphasize is, um, and this is something I've known for a bit, but the idea that uh, the Human Genome Project is a direct extension of the Manhattan Project, that they're, they're not separate, they're just a continuation. And I think with that context, um, it starts to become clearer. And then again, that Santa Fe Institute, which is the center of complexity, uh, is an extension of Los Alamos. So this is a, a map that I did a, a while ago of all this stuff in Dallas that Lynn Davenport had, had sort of fed to me and I had built up over time. And there's still a whole lot of this map that I haven't looked at. And I need to get back to it because as I've looked more into uh, this guy, Stephen Schaefer, and his understanding of video games as sort of a holographic archetypal reality where our current reality is interfaced with Jungian archetypes and myth. Uh, the centering on Pegasus Park, I had this whole plan to do a whole series linking mythology uh, to Pegasus Park, a la, I guess, Rick Reardon and the Percy Jackson series. And I haven't gotten around to that, but I think I think at some point that's that's going to be worth my time because I I didn't realize how important that frame was. But so uh, so Pegasus Park is a center for um, again the intersection of biotechnology and ed, edu, uh, ed tech um, and ed reform and a lot of impact social impact nonprofits and it was the former site of um, both I think Zales, which is synthetic diamonds, which is important in terms of crystallography and also Exxon, I believe. So oil and synthetic diamonds, and then it became sort of this rundown 1970s office center. Um, and uh, now it's being remade as this water cooler for ed reform, synthetic biology, and so, uh, nonprofit social impact finance. So, uh, you know, that's over here, way down in this part of the map, UT Dallas. And again, we have connections there between David Hansen and Hansen Robotics and Sophie the Robot and Texas Instruments. So this stuff, all the ed tech and social impact finance stuff is down there. But up in this corner, uh, I was dealing with uh, some of the nanotechnology, which uh, was based, uh, Zy Zy Zyvex Labs uh, was an early uh, nanoscale manufacturing in Richardson, Texas, uh, where Lynn is based. And this guy, Ralph Merkel and the Merkel trees, he was part of that. He was a theorist uh, in the late uh, 1990s, early 2000s. And of course, all of this nanotechnology was happening in conjunction with the US Department of Energy, which I, in my opinion, doesn't get enough airplay. Uh, but they're a major player in this. And uh, there's also, let's see, the Zyvex, the Productive Nanosystems. This was a gathering in 2007 with Charles Lieber being on the steering committee and Eric Drexler. Uh, and later on, we'll talk a little bit about the intersection of financial markets and biophysics. But it's interesting that Eric Drexler's second wife, Rosa Wang, uh, her, her first job was at the New York Federal Reserve. And then she later went into impact investing. So there we've, we've got this early nanoscale tying biophysics to financial markets. Um, but up here, this is the part that I wanted to mention for this clip. Uh, I was doing some research at the time and uh, Jennifer Lake had done a lot of this work uh, earlier around uh, radiation exposure and polio uh, and the polio va vaccines and um, what this had to do with uh, the Human Genome Project. And so in 1984 at Alta Ski Resort, which is outside of Salt Lake City, and Jason and I made a site visit there, 
It was the site where the ARPANET was first conceptualized here in uh, 19... Uh, 68, I think. Yeah. So they, they kind of support the story goes that they, you know, wrote out the plans for the, the ARPANET and later the internet on a napkin at the ski resort outside of Salt Lake City. Uh, that was 68. And then in 84, they had another, there was another meeting, a very important meeting, um, planning out the Human Genome Project. And that was in the context of uh, this Radiation Effects Research Foundation, uh, which was an outgrowth earlier of the uh, US Department of Energy, let's see, what did they call it? The uh, uh, Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission. So uh, after we dropped the bombs on Japan, and irradiated everyone, and then we wanted to study the impacts on their genetics of the radiation damage. And so initially it was the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, and then in 1975 the U.S. Department of Energy was created, and it was renamed the Radiation Effects Research Foundation. That was in 75, and th their focus was, again, the genetic impact of uh, the radiation from the, uh, the nuclear bombings on uh the survivors and uh, generations after of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So that's supposedly while they were meeting in Alta uh, in 1984 to talk about these issues. But eventually at the time, they just said, you know what, guys, we're just going to, um, instead of just doing these bits and pieces, why don't we just plot out the whole human genome? And so uh, that's when it began. And I would say the average person doesn't understand that Los Alamos uh, Research Labs was a lead on that. Um, again, direct connection from Manhattan Project through to human genome. And what I wasn't aware of that Jennifer Lake brought to my attention was that, uh, and, it, and it was a, a good book. Um, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Atomic. It was about the radioisotopes and the, the history of the radioisotopes industry. But during World War II, Robert Oppenheimer had come out of the University of California and m many of the top level scientists uh, were were out of that the UC system, and so the University of California took over essentially the administrative management of Los Alamos Labs, and then even after World War II, they retained that management of those systems, and then added to it the uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab uh, in Oakland and the Lawrence Livermore Lab also in the Bay Area, and then those ultimately came under the jurisdiction of the Department of Energy, and you can remember that the Department of Energy is sort of a lead on this Japan moonshot project here, where by 2050 we only exist as uh, an avatar without access to a physical body um, in time and space. And the Department of Energy um, is central to that, uh, that program, which involves sort of holographic reality and quantum computing. Um, so, you know, when we're looking at all of this, it's important to understand, for the most part, people aren't aware of this history. I wasn't aware of this history. And I think it's really important to sort of interface next-gen nuclear with nanotechnology, uh, with holographic video game reality, extended reality, and with our biologies as um, sort of an aspect of computation that's going to be used uh, for collective intelligence, for distributed collective intelligence in this post Moore's Law world, like we're crystalline beings and somehow our biology is going to be, if not substantially repurposed, then at least piggybacked on our bio, like our crystalline nature um, and our network nature of social human computation and not just humans, but us with the natural world into a larger panpsychic Gaia super organism for some sort of computational purpose. And I'm not really clear beyond, you know, I, the initial sale clearly is gonna save the planet. Um, we need carbon reduction. That's gonna be the big uh, gnarly problem that we're supposed to solve. Uh, but it's it's about handing over our biology into the computational process. Um, and that's being led by uh, Department of Energy. Uh, and then it goes all the way back to the Manhattan Project. So anyway, just wanting, wanted to give that context. And again, the, the, the larger context for this map is that it, this is Pegasus Park in Dallas, which is a center of um, uh, social impact around the focus on children because the children are gonna be the focus of this, uh, human capital management, um, biotechnology and uh, impact finance and data and AI and 
you know, all sorts of things that are being framed as political ideology or uh, woke or anti-woke and these, these stories that are on the, the surface but not getting down to the uh, the deeper levels of what the game board actually is and uh, all the different interests that are running it.